Okay, we're going to talk about the Krebs cycle. And we've already talked about glycolysis, but I want to show you how glycolysis fits into this. So we're going to have six carbons here. So this is going to represent our glucose. So we're going to break that down into pyruvate. So let's break that down. Got pyruvate there, so we've got three carbons. We'll have a pyruvate here, and again, three carbons. And so we're going to take this through the pyruvic. oxidation. Send this through pyruvate oxidation. We're doing this to get acetyl-CoA. CoA, there we go. But in this process here, we're going to give off CO2 and we're going to reduce NAD plus to an NADH. If you don't know what reduce means or oxidized means, we'll talk about that in another video so that'll help you make sense of everything that I'm referring to. So we have oxaloacetic acid here and it's got four carbons so we have one two three four and acetyl-CoA has two and we want these two to merge here and form citric acid acid and that's the reason the Krebs cycle is also called the citric acid cycle let me go ahead and complete this cycle all the way around. And kind of explain what's happening here. So now you got to remember, this is kind of a preparatory phase here with peruvic oxidation. Some people include that in the Krebs cycle as part of the process of the Krebs cycle. But we're going to just say that that's the prep phase. So for every pyruvate, um, you notice here we have two, so all everything that I show you that happens in this cycle is going to be times two. So the citric acid, you notice here we have four carbons, we have two carbons. The citric acid is going to have six carbons. And so for every turn here, we're going to get NAD plus, and it's going to be reduced to NADH. We're going to have that happen again, so we're going to get another NAD+. Plus. That doesn't look very good. Let me back that up real quick and make that look a little better. So we're going to get another NAD+, plus, and we're going to get it reduced to NADH. Then we're going to have some CO2. We're going to get rid of some CO2 here. Two, then we're going to have an ADP. We're going to get an ATP from it. And then we're going to have an FAD reduced. So FAD. And it's going to be reduced to an FADH. And then we're going to get one more NAD plus, and it's going to be reduced to NADH. And so I just want to kind of draw that out, but remember for each one of these processes, it's times two because we had two pyruvates up here going through that cycle. So let's go ahead and count this up and see if this all makes sense now. So we have glycolysis and it's got two ATP. So we netted two ATP. If you remember back to the glycolysis, glycolysis video, we had four ATP but it cost us two 
and then we also had some byproducts left over that we talked about and those byproducts we had NADHs so we got two NADHs from glycolysis then in this prep phase that we talked about we got two NADHs for each pyruvate let me scroll up here or scroll down and then for the Krebs cycle we end up getting two ATP and I'll show you once we go back through where each one of these is located we got six NADHs and we got two two FADHs and these are going to be important in the electron transport chain, especially these NADHs and these FADHs. So that's what we got out of the Krebs cycle. So what that gave us so far for a total is 4 ATP. And then we got, let's see, 10 NADHs. And we got two FADHs and so that's the end of the Krebs cycle and so we're getting ready to go into the electron transport chain so I'll just write ETC to represent the electron transport chain so here's where the NADHs and the FADHs start to make sense on how they're useful they're going to get oxidized inside the electron transport chain and so for each NADH we're going to get three ATP I do that right in ATP so that means that times 10 we're going to get 30 ATP which we already have four so now that gives us a total of 34, and so for these two FADs, we're going to get 4 ATP. So right here, or actually we're going to get 2 for each one, so that would be times 2. So that would give us 4 ATP there. Make sure that doesn't look like ADP. So that gives us 38. So we after the electron transport chain is finished we're going to get 38 ATP so they're, they're all added up now let's go back in and find them so that you can kind of understand where they're coming from so let's look here so glycolysis netted us 2 ATP and 2 FAD and then for our prep phase, again, we got two NADHs, because right here we have two pyruvates, so this happens twice. I'm only showing it once. Then for the Krebs cycle, right here you'll notice we have an ATP, but remember that happens twice, so that's going to give us two ATP. That's where the, those came from. Then we have six NADHs, so we got one, two, three. Again, it happens twice because of the two pyruvates that go through this. So that gives us six NADHs, and then we had two FADs. We only show one right here, but remember again, it happens twice. And so that's where these come from. So we got the four ATP, that includes the two that came from the Krebs cycle and two from glycolysis. And then there's the 10 NADHs, six from the Krebs cycle, and then we got two from the prep phase. Some people include that in the Krebs cycle, so you may hear some people say eight from Krebs. And then we got two more from glycolysis, so that totaled up to be 10. And we got two FADs coming straight from the Krebs cycle. And then those NADHs essentially will eventually end up being ATP once they go through the electron transport chain. And so we got 30 from them. And then we had two FADs, each one giving us two ATPs. So we did it times two, and that gives us four ATPs. And that's where we got our total 38 ATP. So when you're training aerobically, that's where your energy is coming from. It's coming from glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain in the presence of oxygen. So hopefully this kind of tied up the Krebs cycle and showed you how it fits in with glycolysis and the electron transport chain. 
Uh, the next video we'll get more specific and kind of talk about the electron transport chain and where this process happens. So you've probably already heard of mitochondria. So mitochondria are the little organelles within the cell, the little powerhouse within the cell, and that's where the electron transport chain is going to happen. And that's what we'll be talking about in the next video. So I hope this kind of clarified the Krebs cycle for you and how it works and how we produce energy from it. And I'll see you in the next video.